If you ever struggled with trying to get consistent exercise amid a busy schedule, I would like to share with you in this video the 100 days exercise challenge that has helped me to start exercising consistently. And overall, I'm pretty satisfied with my results. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Andrew To and I work as an analyst in a bank here in Singapore. In this channel, we'll explore ways to make work more enjoyable and productive. So as some of you might have known, I started a 100 days exercise challenge because I wanted to exercise more consistently. But uh, I, I encountered some difficulties along the way and in this video, I'd just like to share some of the main reasons that have kept me going as well as uh, what, what are some of the extra benefits that I found along the way. I would also like to share some of the tips that has helped me to exercise more consistently and I hope that at the end of this video, you will also feel inspired to start exercising more consistently. So I started to work from home early last year and I found that I wasn't exercising very frequently um, back then. So part of the reason was because uh, due to the lockdown, the exercise track that I used to go to, which is at ITE West, was closed. Um, that is actually one of the most uh, regular places where I get my exercise because it's just a five minute walk from my home. But uh, due to COVID-19 and also the stress of working from home, um, I, I couldn't actually find another place to exercise until I came across Pang Suan Canal, which is uh, slightly further away from my home. Uh, not five, not a five minutes walk, but somewhere between like a, it's, it's like a 10 minutes walk. In, in a study conducted by the Harvard School of Public Health, it found that um, people who exercise just 15 minutes a day, running 15 minutes a day, can help to reduce the risk of depression by 26%. So I think that's pretty significant. And that study further found those people who continue to exercise, they, will, they actually face lesser risk of depression from coming back. As a um, healthy living advocate and a previous sportsman when I was uh, doing competitive sports in JC and also pre being quite physically active in army, I, I know the benefits of exercise and I had, I had been exercising quite consistently but uh, ever since I started to uh, work from home, it, it has actually gotten um, more challenging to get some exercise which is kind of like counterintuitive because technically we have more time at home uh, you know, because right after work, we can just log off from work and we can do whatever we want at home, right? But uh, I, I, I kind of like felt lazy and, you know, I was procrastinating. I was like, I, uh, you know, I just, <laughs> I, I, I just didn't want to go out. So it was kind of hard, but I, I know the benefits of doing that. And I wanted to find out what is the long-term benefits of doing that. And secondly, I also want to um, challenge myself to do it more consistently because if I exercise more consistently like back then, back, back then when I was in army or in JC, I know that I can feel those benefits again. But I wanted to explore what are those effects on my workplace productivity. So as some of you might have watched my vlogs, I mentioned that um, exercise helps to release dopamine, which is a pretty, which is a feel good chemical and also helps to reduce the stress hormones in our brains. In a study conducted by a, by a mental health institution, it found that typically people who have um, anxiety issues or face depression uh, experience chemical imbalances in their brains. So I think it makes sense that if we exercise, it helps to produce more of the good chemicals and reduce the bad ones and therefore bring that, uh, bring that chemical makeup back to balance in our brains. Another study also interestingly found that uh, Yale, Yale University followed 1.2 million Americans and studied their exercise reports against their self-reported mental health. And he found that those people who exercise uh, regularly reported 1.5 lesser days of poor mental health per month. And I think that's a pretty interesting study uh, because it basically helps to quantify uh, the effects of exercise on mental health. Because a lot of times we hear that, uh, you know, exercise, yes, exercise helps to reduce stress, it helps to relieve anxieties, but to what extent? And so I'm curious to find out the effects of that on the long term. And so I started to do this 100 days exercise challenge because I told myself that I need to do it more consistently. And by having a challenge, I'm able to just do it you know, uh, without any excuses. It, it, it's kind of, troublesome you know to to just change into a new set of clothes and 
you know, go exercise and, and come back feeling sticky and then, you know, I have to take a shower. You know, it, it feels more comfortable for me to just go to the shower without going to exercise and, and, and I'm done for the day, right? So that was actually quite bothering me and, and, and sometimes I just, you know, just like to noir at home and, <laughs> and, and feel just relaxed. But yeah, I, I had to better that. So what then helped me was I started to film myself. I basically wanted to study my push-up forms because I wanted to do more push-ups over time. Part, and, and that was actually mainly motivated by the I, IPPT test, which uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a fitness test that all men in Singapore under the age of 45 or 50, depending on your vocation, must pass every year. And if you do well in it, you can actually get an incentive, a, a monetary incentive, about 200 to $400, depending on how well you do it. Um, and push-up is actually one of my weakest form exercises. Um, in the past test that I did, I was, on, I was just getting a pass only. Uh, I'm hoping that I can get a silver so I, I can get a few, uh, $100, $200 more. So I, I started to go out there and exercise daily and work on my push-ups. I went to Pang Sua Canal, which after going there several times, it's actually quite a short walk. Um, I started to vlog myself uh, using my camera and I found that having that accountability helps me to just get started exercising daily. Whenever the clock hits uh, 6 p.m. right after work, I know that, okay, this is the time I need to go out and exercise. I just grab my phone, put on my mask, change into my attire, exercise attire, and just head out, right? I, I didn't want to negotiate with myself. I didn't want to think about uh, all the inconveniences of, of, of uh, exercising. I just, I, I just pushed myself out of the door. And I wanted to just film myself. And part of the reason also is because I wanted to experiment with editing and making videos like this. So uh, the good thing is that I use my iPhone to, to do most, more, uh, all the filming and I have Google Photos installed on my iPhone so that every time after I uh, take the video, it will automatically upload into my Google Cloud, Google Cloud so that once I come back home, I can already have all the footage ready for um, edits. So that's how I made those vlogs and if you haven't seen them, you can check it out in the description below or if I can just link it somewhere in this video, uh, feel free to check it out. I wanna share two ways that uh, has helped me to exercise more consistently. Um, the first way is to have, to, is to stick to a consistent exercise timing. What I mean by that is that I basically told myself that every day, after work between Mondays to Fridays and Saturdays. Saturdays is a challenging one, but okay. Basically between Mondays to Fridays at 6.30 to 7 p.m. I will have to leave my home to go out and exercise. By having that mentally, uh, mental habit in my mind, I, it helps me to build a physical habit because I, whenever the, the clock strikes 6.30 to 7 p.m., I know that, okay, I just go. And I don't even need, need to think about it. Now, the challenging part comes when Sometimes I have afternoon meetings or I have things at night that I want to do uh, that, that are not negotiable. So knowing that ahead of time helps me to schedule it around my exercise timing. So instead of going out, going out in the evening, I, I would consciously make a decision to go out and exercise in the afternoon during lunchtime instead. So that has helped me to fulfill the commitment of doing so. So at, at the end of every commitment, uh, I actually come home and view my video so I know that, okay, I have a day 27 uh, check in the box already. And the next day I will have another day 28 of videos and so on and so forth. So that has helped me to start exercising more consistently. On Saturdays, it's uh, challenging because Saturdays is, uh, are usually a different ball game. Uh, it depends on what I do on that day itself. But I also have to mentally commit that during the evening times, it's when I will go out and exercise and I will plan my activities around that. The second way is to have a fitness goal. So as I shared earlier, the fitness goal that I wanted was to improve my push-ups, was to do more push-ups per minute. And having that goal is actually very, um, it, it was actually instrumental to the entire concept of doing this challenge because I wanted to improve. And the good thing is that as I saw myself improve, as I saw myself doing more push-ups under one minute, I actually feel more motivated to, to, to go out and, and do that. So it's kind of like self-sustaining momentum that has helped me to exercise more consistently. 
So that has helped me to finish the entire challenge. <clears throat> and on, on days where I kind of feel like, I, like, I, I just don't want to go exercise, but I, I told myself, okay, I, I have committed to this challenge and I want to see myself improve, right? Do I want to do more push-ups a minute? Yes. Do I want to get a better IPPT result? Yes. And so that has helped me to get out, get out the door without fail. I actually haven't taken my IPPT, IPPT test uh, yet for last year. The requirement was waived uh, last year due to COVID-19, but uh, actually I want to go, I'm pro I probably should go and do it soon because now it's January 2021 and uh, if, I, if I could do it, I, I should and I could get that incentive because I think right now I'm quite confident that I could at least get a pass and possibly a silver. So finally, I'd like to share with you the three unexpected benefits that I felt throughout this challenge. The first unexpected benefit that I felt was increased mental productivity in my work. Now, I, I, I think mental productivity is different from just productivity itself, uh, mainly because productivity, as we know, is just completing tasks in a more efficient way. But I would like to emphasize that these days, um, the work that we do is more mentally taxing than physically taxing. Meaning when we look at emails or when we discuss uh, topics in meetings or when we have to think of a solution to a problem or when we have to talk to someone and negotiate with someone, it's actually pretty mentally uh, taxing. And I think that, that takes a toll on our mental health over time. But what I found was that after exercising for a couple of days and after I've started to build a habit, the next day when I go back to work, I felt more mentally productive in the sense that the thoughts come more straightforward to my mind. I was able to untangle the mental logical knots in my mind uh, much quicker. I was able to process the information and remember information um, faster as well. And I think that has helped me to overall um, work more effectively at home. So that, that was quite, quite a nice plus. So gone are the days where we have to do very physical, hard labor, lifting sandbags and bricks and all that kind of stuff. In today's economy, the work that we do is, 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 is we are basically mental workers, if, if there's ever a term for it. We have moved from physical labor to mental labor where we basically have to solve problems using our minds. And so I think it's super important that we keep our mental health up and we keep our mental, uh, that, and, and, and we basically maintain our mental well-being with and one of the best ways really is to do exercise. The second unexpected benefit of uh, this entire challenge was that I basically, my body basically felt more alive. And the reason is because I, I think it's, I, I've started to eat more healthily. So every time I go back home, I walk back home from exercise, I would pass by Seng Xiong, which is just, a, which is a supermarket just downstairs of my block. And I would grab uh, fresh fruits and vegetables sometimes I, I come across great deals like reduced to clear <laughs> kind of fruits, uh, but actually they are perfectly fine to me. Yeah, my body can't tell the difference between a reduced to clear fruit and, uh, and, 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 and the fruits that are on the rack. But basically those reduced to clear fruits are those fruits that maybe have a few blemishes or they are very ripe already. But to me, it's, it's actually uh, a good deal because it's cheaper. I can just, and, 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 and actually I don't mind eating it because I can just uh, cut off the parts that that don't seem good, uh, but it, but in, in in this pomegranate season, I realized that they actually um, they, because of an oversupply of pomegranates, uh, they will take the slightly drier ones and and, and and sell it for a discount. But actually, inside it's perfectly fine to me, and I <laughs> I didn't experience much difference uh, of that drier one, drier looking one compared to the fresher looking one, and they both taste the same to me. So I enjoy eating pomegranates this season. So I think that has helped me help my body to feel more nourished and more alive having more access and more regular trips to the supermarket after ex exercise uh, has helped me to do so. Also, uh, exercise helps with my posture because um, I actually have poor posture due to slouching, you know, d due to looking at a computer all day long and also partly due to my height. Um, as some of you might know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty tall guy, about 1.84 cm, 1.84 meter. Um, and, uh, and because of my height, sometimes uh, I, I tend to look, uh, I, I tend to look down or slouch, and uh, I think that has taken a toll on my posture. But at exercise helps me to reset that, to bring myself back into the proper posture, 
uh, such as running and doing push-ups and monitoring my form while on um, uh, while I'm filming myself. That has helped me to um, increase uh, to 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 put to roll my shoulders back because that's a key of a key part of the push-up exercise and uh, stand up straighter and, and, and just you know al al align my neck you know just to make sure that it's straight and that has helped me to feel more confident and uh, overall um, feel more alive the last bonus benefit I felt is I basically felt happier and I, I started to realize these um, thoughts as I started to exercise for example while I was running along the Palm Swan Canal uh, there are actually many joggers over there it's a, a, a pretty popular spot uh, among joggers in, in this neighborhood. It has this very nice long stretch of uh, well-paved road yeah? and, and it has a canal beside it and it's lots of greenery so yeah it's, it's, it's a pretty good place but the point is there are a lot of people there and some of the runners are faster some of the runners are slower and I realized that everyone is on their own exercise journey. Everyone is there to do their own fitness goals and they all have different fitness goals just because I overtake someone or someone overtakes me uh, it, 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 it doesn't mean that um, that I'm better than them or I'm worse than them I, I just learned how to focus on my own fitness goals because the reason why I'm there is because I wanted to do more exercise I wanted to discover the benefits of doing long-term exercise so that has helped me to focus more on myself and and, and, and my own happiness so coming back to the studies that I mentioned earlier do I still have some down days I did have some down days, but I actually recovered much faster from it. For example, I still remember there was one of that particular day where I had some problems at work and after I logged up from work, that problem was still lingering in my mind. I actually didn't feel good about it and I was pretty feeling pretty down about it. But uh, I knew that I had to go out to go out and exercise. And while I was exercising, I actually felt a sense of relief. Um, uh, even though the problem was still on my mind, I, I was actually mentally transported to a different dimension where I had to just focus on my physical bodies and that has helped me to clear out the stress that I feel about, about the problem and after all, I felt that that problem isn't such a problem after all it's uh, actually, uh, I, I, I can actually see a solution after it so I did have some down days but the point is that I was able to recover much faster from it. And I think if not for an exercise, I will probably would still be wallowing in, in, in despair. And you know, uh, it's, I, I'll probably still, I, I mean that, that day will just end as it is. But having that exercise helps me uh, to pick myself up. I think that statistics of having 1.5 lesser days of poor mental health per month is significant. Um, and it basically says that we're not immune to to poor mental health it just means that we're able to recover faster from it maybe there are just fewer days that we will count as poor mental health like for example that day even though i kind of felt bad uh, but after the exercise i felt better so i wouldn't count that as a day of poor mental health um, but yeah i think we'll still experience some of those down days when things really get bad but exercise has helped me to relieve some of those stress it's 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 like a symptom reliever and to a certain extent it also helps to uh, cure the root of it because it helps to restore some of the imbalances of chemicals in our brains uh, due to the stresses that were caused so these were the three exercise benefits that I felt in this 100 days exercise uh, challenge. I thank you for joining me in this journey. And if you'd like to check out my other vlogs, you feel free to check it out in the description below. And I look forward to see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.